Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome back to Analog A Hate Story. Right then, last we left off, we were delving deeper into Hune's uh, quote unquote family. And it's been wonderful so far. Eye opening, enthralling, and terribly irritating. Ugh. Dearest mother, my mother in law has relieved me of any responsibility for the looking after the pale bride. As a matter of pride, I feel bad that a simple child is too much for me to handle. I'm certainly glad she's not my problem anymore. Now I can put my undivided attention back where it belongs. I know my husband is in his ambitions. Mm. Tell me though, mother, because I know we didn't always get along that well. I was never that bad, was I? Sure, we were both happy when I moved out. Well, perhaps I wasn't happy right away. I was more scared. But I'm sure you were relieved to have some space. But you would never have given up me, right? I was never that bad, was I? Deep down, I worry. My husband seems content to take his kind of children, which is his, which is a decision I can certainly live with. But what do we do? Uh, but what about when we do? What if we have a daughter? Will I feel with her too? I've been telling myself that it's not me; it's her. She's a peculiarly unruly child, and it's not an, and it's not ordinarily that bad. It's not right. Please tell me I have nothing to worry about. Please. Hmm. I'm not sure if this is her being selfish or if this is her being mm, more concerned with, well, okay, that sounds a little cruel. Or if this is rather something of a, a, of a crisis she's having, of her, her self-confidence waning or something. Hmm. Or maybe it's a combination of both. Hmm. You know, I never did like her. When I woke up, she was just this awful person who kept saying the most awful things. Never as bad as mother, but still. I didn't read any of her letters when I was alive, of course, but you know what really surprised me? She made such an awful impression on my life. I hated her the most for so long, and she barely even ever mentioned me. All my suffering was just a minor distraction to her. Nothing more. Insignificant compared to her man. I... There's one more from her that you should read. I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to feel about her. There's just one thing that I keep thinking, though. Just one thing. I have no idea what her name was. Huh. Oh, boy. Five pages, yay. Everything managed to spiral out of control so quickly today. I wasn't planning on it happening this way, but here's the point where I make my stand, I guess. It sounds dramatic, but I won't just let them marry me off to some stranger. I won't. I won't let them. Just before dinner yesterday, Mother told me that I had to go to an interview with some man. The Emperor, I guess, for all I care. The way she put it was, I'd get a chance to see that he's a man you could fall in love with, or something stupid like that. As if, I said in response. I spent the rest of the evening thinking about what I could possibly do to make clear I wouldn't let them do this. This morning after breakfast, sister-in-law showed up in my room. Good morning, she said. Today's a big day for you, isn't it? Mother-in-law wanted me to help you get dressed and all made up. You won't make a good first impression after all. I glared at her and summoned up all my courage. No, I said. What? she asked. No, I'm not going. She left and Mother came, herself came in. This was it, I told myself. This is the big moment. I'm not going, I said, before she could say anything. I'm not going to get dressed up. I'm not gonna, going to meet him, and I'm definitely not going to get married, I shouted. For a moment, she said nothing and didn't move. Then she left, too, without saying a word. I thought that would f feel good, but it didn't. <sighs> oh, sorry about that. It just made me worry more. I couldn't have possibly won that easily, I thought, and I hadn't, of course. After a few minutes, you returned with Father, who looked incredibly angry. Min Jung says you refuse to get ready for your interview, he said. Yeah, I stammered, not used to talking to him. I won't. I won't go when I won't get married. He walked over in just two strides and glared at me for a second. I had no idea what he was going to do. Then he slapped me in the face, so hard that it knocked me over. Yes, you will, he said. I'll drag you there, kicking and screaming if I have to. My face in so much pain, I forced myself to sit back up. I won't, I said, bracing myself for another hit. He did. Yes, you will, he said. I couldn't keep this up. It already hurt so much. I couldn't just brave that out. 
Then it came to me. If you make me do the interview, I said, I'll tell the Emperor that you've been conspiring behind his back. It was all I could think of, and all I could do was cross my fingers and hope that that worked. It had to. He glared at me, and in that moment I knew. It worked. The two of them looked at each other, and then they both left together. That was three hours ago. I don't know what's going to happen now, and I think my face is swollen. It still hurts, and I didn't want to go that way. So that's me making my stand. Ugh. Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll get to that, but for now, please just look at everything else first. Ugh. Hmm, nothing, nothing, okay. The Pale Bride picked the worst po uh, worst of all possible days to throw into the one of her childish fits, refusing to even get dressed for her interview. And this one was with the Emperor himself. Not even my husband was able to get her to listen. He had to personally apologize himself for not being able to bring her a schedule and lied about a sudden illness. You have to do something about her, I said to my husband that evening. She's completely out of control. I know, he said. That's quite clear. He looked so worried. I hugged him and tried to comfort him. Everything would fall apart if something couldn't be done. Oh yes, your poor, poor standing and plans. Because some human being won't let you won't let you use them as a fucking pawn. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. You <laughs> absolute trash. Mm. She threatened to say something stupid and dangerous to the Emperor, and we were, and we were both scared that she might. Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh, God, no. Maybe it's time to consider doing something drastic, I said to him. He nodded. I know, he said. I can only think of one idea. I do not like it. I'd rather not. Even hitting her was far worse than I would have wanted, he explained. He explained his idea to me, and I agreed that it was terrible. I didn't like it either. But it would stop her from arguing. Stop her from ruining her own life. Oh, yeah, because you give even the slightest amount of a shit about her life. My husband was, is always right. There was only one way. You mutilated her, didn't you? <sighs> mm. Recently, the Pale Bride's temperament has improved immensely. It isn't simply that she's quiet now. It's that she's actually respectful and calmer. If you did what I think you did, it's not that she's respectful and calm it's that she's fucking terrified of you that you would do something that absolutely inhumane christ any pity i had just went out the window i i'm I, no but fuck it you're dead i'm glad you deserved it <laughs> probably worse actually Ugh. after rescheduling she had an interview with the emperor and he was actually quite charmed with her i'm just so happy for her own sake that she's finally managed to stop resisting the marriage it's all coming together now. A date has been set for when she'll be sent to live with him, and in the meanwhile, things at home have been peaceful again for everyone. Actually, it's been be it's better than just that. I've been spending more time with her of her own free will. I've been giving her advice for coping with marriage, and now the girl actually listens politely. Otherwise, there's little else to write about. I wish there had been a better way for her to get her to behave, but in the end, it seems to be working out. I still can't imagine how awful it would be if she refused to ever leave the home and simply made life hell for us, or worse, if she got sent off and tried to pull that on her own husband. She'd get sent back for sure. Maybe now things will finally start to come together for the family. I must admit that for a time I doubted the optimism that Jung Soo expressed in the 319th year, but now it seems that he was right all along. What a relief. I just... No. No, no. Ugh. 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 Fuck you. Of her own free will. Yeah. 
I... I can't believe she actually said that. It's wrong. It's completely wrong. I can't believe she could have possibly thought that I... Just unbelievable. I mean, you're absolutely right. Jesus. The new promise. Dearest mother, the pale bride, today the pale bride finally left home to live with her new husband. As she isn't a primary wife, there's no fanfare or ceremony for her departure itself, so instead, last night we had a big feast to commemorate. I know I've said bad things about her before, but it's not just that I was happy to see her gone. She's been better since mother and father-in-law managed to get her to keep quiet. The thought of it still leaves me really uncomfortable. She was always just a confused child. I hate the fact that the family considers her so important and neglects my husband, and I certainly hate her for not appreciating the status and fighting it. But the fact that she doesn't understand the world, I can feel for that. It's not like I always understand myself. More than you know. Regardless, it went very well. The first big feast was my idea, and she was happy to help with the cooking. Earlier, she had spent the afternoon getting ready to, dr uh, getting ready to the dress she was uh, going to wear when she arrived with mother-in-law, and she seemed rather anxious about it. When we cooked, I opened the wine early and poured it for her. I think she needed it. I think she ne <laughs> I think it's probably lucky she didn't become a fucking alcoholic. I told her the same story I told you a while ago, about how scared I was when I first moved in. It seems as though it was a lifetime ago, and yet despite all the strangeness, I had grown accustomed to it. You'll eventually grow to love him, I promised her, just as she, uh, you promised me all those years ago. I appreciate how good you'll have it. Ugh. You've... you've heard almost everything now. I know, I know you've, had, you've had faith in me, and I promise... I promise it hasn't been misplaced. There's just one more thing. I don't think you'll be surprised. You seem smart, I'm sure. I'm sure you've already guessed what it is. Still. Go ahead. Ask it. Ask me the obvious question. Is that a heartbeat? Does she mean this? Because... Oh, wait a minute. Or is it this? Go ahead. Oh, ask it. So... That's all I can think of is... Because there's nothing else new anywhere. So it would have to be... Oh boy. 82%. Why did I kill them? Here. You want to know what could have made me uh, look at my father's face and be so filled with, much, uh, filled with so much hatred? You want to know how I could possibly think my whole family deserved to die? If you haven't already guessed, here. Here's my last diary entry. Just... I can't, I can't say it myself. I can't bring myself to even now. And honestly, I don't want to force you to say it yourself. That's just even, even more cruel than you being forced to, you know, relive it like this and all. Please just read it. <laughs> oh God. Forever silenced, God. <sighs> I almost wish I had <sighs> fuck I almost wish I had like a bottle of whiskey or something nearby but I haven't touched any, out any hard liquor in months and <sighs> right now I might actually build, I might kind of need it I just mm. well I feel like I, I do but no that's the evening where everything went wrong, where I thought I was going to win with my adopted parents, well, I didn't. I, I lost. Making my stand, I wrote, just hours before it happened. Yeah, right. When I got called into the kitchen, they were both there. On one of the stove burners, there was a knife. I thought it was a little bit odd, but I didn't care. The father stared at me and said, the fighting needs to end now. He was so sure of himself. Of course he was. He had every reason to be. But I stubbornly stood my ground. I said no. I do not want to hurt you, he lied. 
You shouldn't have, but you did. The fact that you didn't want to doesn't excuse what happened. Bip -bip -bip. Just saying. Just promise to be less argumentative, and this can end peacefully. But I just had it. To, I just had to fight back. I just had to say no. I just had to remind him I wasn't joking. I really will tell the Emperor that you hurt me and that you plotted against him. No, he said, you won't. He motioned at Mother and said, bring her over. She grabbed me and I tried to dig my feet in, but it didn't work. Then Father pinned me against the wall with his whole body. And I kicked and screamed, desperately trying to get free, but it was no use. He was big and I was small and sick and weak and frail. Then he grabbed the knife from the stove and I shrieked in horror. No, I screamed at him, don't! But then Mother grabbed my mouth and held it open. I tried to keep screaming, but I was powerless and terrified. When he raised the knife towards me, I thought he was going to kill me. It was worse. The next thing I knew, I could taste disgusting flesh as he stuck his fingers in my mouth and pulled. I'm sorry, Mother said. Bullshit! And then briefly, I could taste the steel. Then blood. Uh, then nothing but blood. All I could taste was so much blood. Nothing but blood. Finally, they both let go of me, and I collapsed onto the floor. Why, I wanted to say, but couldn't. I blacked out from the pain after that. But just before I did, I could swear I heard Father say, you will ne not ever argue with any man again. He was right, of course. Oh my god. <sighs> well, if that isn't 10 different times of horrifying, oh my. Jesus Christ. And of course, she couldn't write the language they use, so she couldn't communicate at all after that. Sick, twisted, heartless fucks. That's why. That's why I gave up. That's why I wanted to kill them so much. That's... Sorry, it's really hard to talk about. Yeah, trauma usually is. It's just I... I'll try, I'm sorry. I told you it makes sense, right? If there was a good reason? Please, tell me you don't think I'll let you down. No. I... I haven't? You don't... You mean you understand, then? I understand. Doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with what you eventually did, especially not the entire ship. But I understand why. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I... That really means so much to me. I'm so glad. I don't know... I don't know what I'd do if you didn't think... Well... Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just... I was terrified. So terrified. I thought you might not. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. There's no, uh... Right. Uh, I have... It's... I... I... Whoop. It's not. <laughs> ah, jeez. I'm in love with you. I... I finally said it. Oh, this is so embarrassing. I know it's... That's... I'm being really silly, right? I mean... Ah, jeez. I'm, I'm sure you, I, I know what you're thinking, right? Even it's ridiculous. In a way, yes, but actually kind of no. Considering the everything that she's been through and then having to sit in the ship for like, what, 600 years I think it was? And then finally someone comes along and is... Not only is willing to listen to her, but also to... But also seems to be understanding and isn't degrading her or... Yeah, I can understand why. Maybe not a decision made 
with much forethought, but I can understand why, yeah, so it's not ridiculous, not given the circumstances. You... you don't? Oh, that's why. So I'm in love because you manage to happily surprise me every time. I never... I never thought I would find someone who understands me, someone who listens, who would hear my whole life story and doesn't hate me. Really, I've been wonderful. I know, I know, it's a lot to spring on someone just like that. And I don't even know if you're even a man or the sort of woman who would, wouldn't have a problem with that and still unmarried. But if you are, do you think we might have a chance together? Even just a chance? Well, you're a computer, so no, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I mean, a relationship doesn't have to be physical. Very common misconception there. Does not have to be at all. People put way too much value on sex, and it's not like there's anything wrong with sex being a part of a relationship, it's that it is not the crux of one. A relationship is built far more on the interpersonal communication and relationship between two people, how they mesh, how they support one another, how they get along. That's the real core of being in a relationship with somebody. So yeah, there is a chance. Ah, that is truly the most amazing thing I've ever heard in my life. Thank you, thank you so much. I've been sort of thinking about this for a while. Um, a little bit embarrassing, I know, but well, we don't have to get rushed. To, we don't have to rush to get married or anything. I mean, you know, scary. It was the last time I was a wife. I just just really like it to uh, just to be with you as an equal. Does that sound alright to you? Uh, d duh, yes, obviously, of course. Wonderful. Oh, I, I really do. I really, I really do love you. It's funny, isn't it? I know nothing about you. I have no idea what you look like. I have no idea how you talk. I have no idea what's supposed to be the most important thing about a person if you're a man or a woman. I have no idea how old you are, although I suppose you must be much younger. Or maybe even older, depending on how you look at it. Nor do I have any idea where you're from or even your name. But I do know that you take me seriously, that you understand me, that you don't treat me as something less just for being a woman. I know that talking to you makes me feel better than I've ever felt in my life. And that's good enough for me. That's far better than I've ever had. Uh, so... Very well. I'll decompile myself now. That way you can just jump to terminal and type download to copy everything to your ship, including myself. It... It should only take a few days to do a complete transfer. I'll see you soon, all right? Uh, so this is how my sister-in-law felt on her wedding night. <laughs> Prepare to get downloaded. Uh, so wait, was it just download? Permanent, permanent session AI, personality with... Ah. Warning, sorry, wait, starting active system download will permanent return session AI personality is available. Oh, oh so, yeah, that's a separate thing, right? Download Hune in addition to logs. Yes, yes, yes. Hune will be transferred. Pairing files for. Oh. Let us say, fade to black. Don't make me wait three days. Oh. Oh. I can't make out the sticky notes. Oh, do I click? I, I don't know, she's actually reaching her hand towards the script. Oh. Good work on recovering the files. I just spoke to the sponsor representatives on audio. He said they really pleased with what you delivered. I've credited your account with a standard payment. Listen, I've gotten the job lined up for you. It's on Earth, but it sounds to me like that after that last job, you could use a change of pace. And then wife has... Okay, then. <laughs> Ending two. Completion rate this time, 83%. Completion rate 30. Thanks for playing. Thank you for making the game. Oh, Jesus. Detective, Korean Fusion. See you next time. Oh, next mission. Oh, made her do it. My waifu. <laughs> uh.
That... I mean, okay. <sighs> Speaking of compiling. That game was... Pretty awesome. The way it was presented, the characters, the... Mm, the co the 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 the, the, the uh, damn it what's the word the subject matter that it dealt with and how it did so I mean there were times that made you made me angry there were times that it made me uh, horrified me and there were times that made me feel you know genuinely happy or sympathetic it This is just an all-around really great game. It's, it's a, 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 a definitely a departure from the usual like visual novel. Uh, I, I, is it is this technically considered to be one? Because it isn't really. I mean, it uses the the Rinby engine obviously, but it's not like it's it's not a traditional one in terms of format how it's uh, played out. Obviously, it's much more text based and with you know some other little bits and bobs here and there like with the. Uh, the commands and all that, but it's, I mean, it's a very cool concept and it was pulled off really well, I think. Um, assuming anybody even watches this, I don't know if I'm going to do any more videos and well, okay. I may hop around in it and like record, uh, well, and maybe record like some other endings if I get them, but I don't know if I'm going to do a whole rerun of the game, obviously for, well, for very clear reasons given that a lot of it would be just be retreading stuff I've already done and there's not a lot of point in that, but getting new things like new endings and so on, maybe I'll record some of that, but obviously those videos would be a lot shorter. I've made these as long as they tended to be because uh, given that it was all text-based, you know, and how it was a very, very narrative heavy game, um, I felt like really an hour was the only way I could do it justice, so. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll probably do some other videos for it, but like I said, they'll probably be shorter and just like, uh, may even be just like compilations of different endings and stuff or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. In any case, I hope you enjoyed because I know I enjoyed playing this and I will see you in whatever the hell I do next. So thank you very much for watching.